one thing you're probably wondering is how exactly does Oregon go about vaccinating 12,000 people a day? 12,000 is almost a quarter of the total number of people we vaccinated since mid-December when we first got the vaccine. The highest single day vaccination so far has been December 30th when we inoculated 7,328 people. The worst day Christmas when we vaccinated a whopping 12 people, something I'm really still not over. So how do we go from that to 12,000 a day? Well, we took that question to Dr. Katie Scharf with Kaiser Permanente. We've actually uh, recruited 100, um, about 100 retired uh, clinicians at this point. And so uh, just really kind of thinking outside of the box in terms of, you know, what additional staff can we use to deploy this vaccine? And so we have um, uh, retired uh, physicians who will be um, helping with the vaccine rollout. We're also um, working with uh, University of Portland to use uh, nursing students um, who have preceptors with them to help with the vaccine rollout and just really looking at additional uh, uh, resources to really get this vaccine out uh, to our healthcare workers and our community because we know that that is one of the most essential pieces in getting this uh, pandemic under control. Now look, a big question underscoring all of this and considering the fact that this vaccine didn't poof like appear out of thin air, why didn't we figure all of this out ahead of time? We asked Dr. Scharf that too, and here's what she told us. Yeah, it's a good question and, and you know, one that we all get, you know, um, you've known this vaccine was coming and I guess I would say, you know, a couple of things. One is in the um, abstract sense, we knew a vaccine was coming, but until we actually had that vaccine in our freezers in terms of actually like training and, and um, planning for deployment, it was a little difficult because we didn't know exactly what the product was or, or the logistics of the product. Um, additionally, you know, we have been uh, managing this COVID-19 pandemic now for 10 months. And so as we know that the vaccine has been coming, we've also been, uh, you know, managing uh, testing strategy and, and treatment strategy uh, and uh, PPE for the health system. So there, there is, you know, significant, um, I guess, multiple directions that our staff are being pulled. And so, um, and, and then understanding, you know, this is the first time, um, at least, you know, in, in the last 100 years or so that we've had like a mass vaccination campaign in the middle of a pandemic. And so, Yes, we want to get that volume out there, but uh, we are we are working on it and we are this is the first time we've we've really had to implement it. So it, it makes it challenging. But um, I think um, I know that various healthcare organizations are, are coming together to really work for a more community wide uh, mass vaccination campaign. And, and that is the goal um, as we see the importance of getting those vaccines in arms to protect people. If you have more questions about this rollout, please reach out to us. Use that hashtag. Hey, Dan, just like Paul did. Paul asked us, how come the governor and state of Oregon have not called on the Oregon National Guard to help with the vaccinations and dramatically escalate the process? That's a pretty good question, Paul. It's actually one we've been getting a lot. Yesterday, we got, a, a, got it a ton after we criticized the state's vaccine rollout. We took your question to the Oregon Military Department. The director of public affairs, Stephen Bomer, told us that they have actually been preliminarily meeting, talking about what would happen, how they would do it if the guard could help out. But ultimately, they defer to the Oregon Health Authority to make the final decision because they are the lead agency. So we asked OHA and the long story short, they said no National Guard yet. And the reason why was a bit surprising. OHA told us that if they did call in the guard, it would be used to administer vaccines to groups that have been disproportionately affected by the virus, which in the past they have told us were black and Hispanic communities. But today they said that those communities have a historic distrust of government entities. So, no guard.